Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, The Perspective. In this episode of The Perspective, uh, we will take a look at the induction of C-295 aircraft into the Indian Air Force fleet and evaluate how it enhances the uh, airlift capability of the Indian Air Force in the light transport segment. The key factors of uh, this deal for 56 C-295 aircraft are as follows. The first 14 aircraft will be manufactured and assembled in Spain. The last of the 14 aircraft should enter the Indian Air Force service by August uh, 2025. The 40 aircraft will be uh, assembled at uh, the final assembly uh, line in uh, Vadodara, Gujarat. In addition to that, we also have a main constituent assembly facility in Hyderabad, which will be uh, working on the working on manufacturing the sub assemblies for uh, this project. The first made in India aircraft should uh, enter service by September 2026, and the final uh, 56th aircraft should will be expected to enter service with the Indian Air Force by August uh, 2031. Now, Indian Air Force has also signed a performance-based uh, logistics uh, agreement with the uh, Tata Airbus combined, uh, which will ensure 85% uh, fleet availability rate. Now, this is uh, also an important deal because this is the first private sector manufacturing and assembly of a major uh, aircraft in India. You know, uh, some of you might remember that when this deal was proposed of a private sector participation in manufacturing of uh, aircrafts in India, the HL had put up a very strong opposition uh, to this deal. In fact, uh, an ex-HAL chairman had written a very strongly worded letter against this deal. But uh, better sense prevailed and uh, thank good for that. So we finally have a parallel uh, manufacturing ecosystem in the private sector as well. Coming to the Indian Air Force airlift capability, we basically have uh, five aircraft types. Uh, which cater to uh, different payload segments. Uh, let's have a look at uh, each of these segments. The Indian heavy lift uh, capability uh, is uh, represented by the C-17 Globemaster, which entered service with the Indian Air Force in 2013. We have 11 of these aircraft. Uh, each aircraft can lift more than 17 tons of payload. And uh, the best part about this aircraft is its uh, very wide and voluminous cargo hold, which allows it to carry outsized cargo. The other uh, type that we have is the IL-76. Um, IL-76 entered service with the Indian Air Force sometime in mid-1980s. And as per the openly available information, we have 17 aircraft of this type. Uh, in addition to that, we also have seven aerial refueling aircraft which are based on the same uh, platform. So, from 1980s to 2023, these aircraft have uh, served almost 40 years with the Indian Air Force. And uh, the Indian Air Force had actually drawn up a plan worth 4,000 crores to upgrade these aircraft with the uh, new engines, avionics, uh, navigation su uh, suites, uh, communication systems, defensive aids, but uh, that program is uh, presently stuck because of the ongoing uh, conflict uh, between Russia and Ukraine. Now, here I would like to share an anecdote. After the Sino-Indian standoff in Eastern Ladakh started in mid-2020, uh, the Indian Air Force airlifted a large number of tanks, infantry fighting vehicles and troops into the uh, Eastern Ladakh theater. But uh, that is not the first time uh, the IAF had airlifted uh, tanks or infantry fighting vehicles into Ladakh. In fact, the first time uh, infantry fighting vehicles were airlifted was in 1986 when BMP-2s were airlifted to the Thois Air Base uh, as part of Operation Trident, uh, which was a subcomponent of Operation Brastak. Subsequent to that, uh, uh, again in 1986-87, uh, the Indian Air Force uh, airlifted uh, T-72 tanks to the uh, Ladakh theater because the Indian Army wanted to test 
the employability of tanks and IFVs uh, in that theater. So the IL-76 airlifted uh, a squadron of T-72 tanks. Now a key takeaway from this airlift uh, was that the width of the cargo hold of an IL-76 aircraft is such that uh, a T-72 tank can barely fit inside uh, the uh, the IL-76 aircraft. You know, and even when even even this is possible when you remove the side skirts of the T-72 tanks, as you can see in the picture here. Because after you move in the tank inside uh, the cargo uh, uh, hold of the aircraft. There is very less space between the side skirts of the tank and the skin of the aircraft, which is an important factor because the width of the T-90 tank is uh, slightly more than the T-72 tank, which means that unlike the T-72 tank, the T-90 tank cannot be airlifted by an IL-76. Uh, and this is where the C-17 comes into the picture. Because uh, a unique capability of the C-17 aircraft is its uh, humongous uh, cargo hold. You know, uh, the because generally what happens is when we talk about uh, uh, when we talk about a, a transport aircraft, we tend to talk about uh, or focus only on its payload capacity. Apart from the payload capacity, another thing, another aspect which is very important is the dimension of the cargo uh, 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 cabin or the uh, cargo hold of the aircraft because that the dimensions decide what can be put inside the aircraft and what cannot be put because as per statistics and uh, as per the statement of uh, 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 certain IAF transport uh, pilots an aircraft runs out of its cargo volume much before it runs out of its payload capacity you know, unless and until an aircraft is carrying a very high density item like a tank or an infantry fighting vehicle, the uh, the aircraft will run out of the volume of its cargo hold before it reaches the maximum payload capacity. And uh, the dimension of the cargo hold uh, allow you to carry outsized cargo, uh, you know, uh, like tanks or IFVs, cranes, guns. Uh, here in, in this picture, you can see uh, an uh, Abraham tanks uh, rolling out of the cargo hold of an aisle of a C-17 aircraft, and you can see the space between the uh, the tank and the uh, side uh, 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 the side walls of the aircraft. This is another uh, interesting slide uh, which compares the dimensions of the uh, cargo hold of various aircraft types uh, in operation across the globe. So the widest and the tallest is the C-17 followed by AN-12 uh, which was again an aircraft type which Indian Air Force operated from uh, early 60s uh, till uh, 80s and these were replaced uh, by the IL-76 in, in the Indian Air Force. Post that you have the IL-76 and then you have the A400, uh, which has a slightly shorter, uh, the width of the cabin is slightly lesser than IL-76, but it is much taller than um, IL-76. And then, of course, we have the C-130 Hercules. So next uh, transport category that we have is the medium lift uh, segment, where at present we only have the C 130J Super Hercules aircraft, of which we operate 12. Uh, this aircraft has a 19 uh, tons payload capacity, and, uh, and again, this is an aircraft which the Indian Air Force has used extensively since its induction uh, in the service uh, for both uh, uh, movement of uh, uh, goods, troops, uh, airborne operations, special forces, insertion, uh, paradrop. Uh, and all the activities. Post that, uh, we have the light transport workhorse, uh, which is the AN-32, uh, which basically we had 105 of these aircraft, and I think uh, after factoring into the losses over the years, I think we have 95 or 96 uh, operational aircraft as we speak. 
Now this is a workhorse of the Indian Air Force and you will find them uh, operational in all these sectors. In fact, in many cases, you know, uh, you know uh, uh, the AN-32 forms the uh, spoke of the hub and spoke model. So you will have the IL-76 or a C-17 carrying uh, a large cargo from a central uh, logistic nodes to the periphery of the country. And from there, you will find the AN-32s uh, carrying the load in smaller packets to the uh, peripheral areas. Uh, where, for example, a flight might go or an IL-76 or, or a C-17 might fly from uh, Hindon or Chandigarh or Agra to Guwahati, uh, Chabua, Jorhat and from there uh, an AN-32 will carry the load uh, uh, to advanced landing grounds across the entire northeast or even uh, to uh, airdrop them directly uh, over uh, the landing zones in the far-flung areas. So the air, so the uh, broad uh, uh, they carry uh, uh, payload in the six to seven ton category. Another aircraft in the uh, light transport category is the HS748 Evro. Now HS748 Evro was conceived as a military transport aircraft, but uh, ever since its uh, inception and induction into the Indian Air Force, the aircraft has suffered from certain shortcomings which prevent it from being used as a proper transport aircraft. The first and foremost is that it does not have a rear uh, ramp which can allow uh, loading and offloading of uh, cargo, men and material uh, easily into the uh, aircraft. And uh, even, uh, by, even while used as a troop carrier, it is not very uh, conducive uh, for uh, paradrop operations. So within the Air Force, it has been largely used for communication duties, uh, you know, where they hop from between various uh, IAF Air Force, IAF uh, bases uh, for carrying couriers, important dignitaries, excuse me, dignitaries uh, uh, and, other, and, and other communication duties training of pilots and navigators and stuff like that. And uh, the way uh, C-295 induction was rationalized was C-295 was set, is, are, are said to be a replacement for the HS-748 uh, in the Indian Air Force. Now, as we move along and as we will see later, C-295 is not exactly a replacement for uh, HS-748. In fact, it is much more than that. So, which like I said, it brings us to a central question, is C-295 a replacement for HA-748? You know, and the resounding answer is no, it is not. You know, C-295 is actually in the same category as AN-32. In fact, it has, uh, uh, it can carry more payload than an AN-32. And uh, uh, we have about 95-96 AN-32s in service, which we have upgraded uh, uh, fairly recently. And adding 56 more aircraft to the fleet over a period of next 5-6 years enhances our light transport airlift capability by 50%, purely in terms of uh, the aircraft number. If I were to you know, do this calculation on the basis of the payload capacity, then this airlift capability is much more. You know, because, uh, you know, because if you compare the specifications, uh, the C-295 not only carries more troops, it carries more paratroopers, it carries more payload and uh, it has a better range uh, than the AN-32. Uh, and you know, not to mention that uh, a C-295 is a much modern aircraft as compared to AN-32. Uh, you know, uh, this, uh, uh, the slide in front of you shows uh, the cockpits of the upgraded AN-32 vis-a-vis -vis the cockpit of a C-295. So a C-295 is equipped with all the modern navigation aids, safety features, communication suite, uh, I'm sorry, uh, self-defense self uh, uh, suites. And uh, overall, it is a much more modern aircraft uh, as compared to uh, AN-32. Another aspect of AN-32 aircraft which is not very widely known is that it is not exactly optimized for paradrop operations. Uh, when the AN-32s were first trialed by a parachute brigade in uh, mid-1980s, uh, it was found that uh, 
the paratroopers were getting dispersed over a very large uh, area and uh, this was not which was not considered feasible from a paradrop perspective and uh, this information is based uh, on uh, certain uh, articles written by ex uh, parachute and parachute special forces officers relative to this the in the c295 is a modern platform which is actually optimized for troop carrying uh, roles and for the paradrop uh, role we had earlier also discussed the aspect about the dimensions of the cargo bay or the of the transport aircraft you know apart from looking at only its payload capacity and if you compare c295 with the an32 you find that uh, the cabin length in uh, a c295 uh, excluding its uh, cargo door is the longest in its class it is 41 feet 8 inches as compared to 36 feet in an32 the cabin height is more or less uh, the same where the an32 scores over uh, the c295 is in terms of the cab cabin width so it is uh, 8 feet 10 inches for c295 and slightly more uh, for an32 at 9.1 feet so overall in terms of technology in terms of uh, performance in terms of uh, dimensions payload carrying capacity uh, c295 is actually a superior aircraft to in 32 i mean which it should be because it is of much more modern generation and uh, these 56 aircraft so that we will add over next 5 uh, 6 years will significantly enhance our uh, light transport uh, carrying capability not only in terms of numbers but uh, in terms of the payload and also in terms of the total number of troops and the paratroopers that we can carry uh, per aircraft uh finally uh, you know another important aspect of the c295 deal is that this uh, that c295 uh, as a platform can be customized for multiple usages now for example the indian navy and the indian coast guard are looking for maritime patrol aircraft and uh, drdo had already proposed uh, you know a version a uh, based on the c295 uh, uh, one version for the navy and one version for the coast guard and be between the two of them they are looking for 15 aircraft apart from that uh, we can also have signal intelligence and electronic intelligence versions of the uh, c295 aircraft which are extremely important uh, in uh, today's battlefield Uh, to map the uh, you know the electronic order of battle uh, spectrum of the adversaries and also to snoop in on their uh, communication and uh, signal uh, intelligence and finally uh, the aircraft can also serve as uh, uh, as a platform for uh, propeller based uh, you know airborne early warning and control system now while the indian air force uh, is uh, looking at uh, you know a larger aircraft in the a321 uh, uh, category for its uh, airborne early warning and control system uh, requirement but those are larger uh, aircrafts and those are more expensive as well so we or the indian air force can actually have a combination of uh, uh, larger uh, aircraft based on uh, uh, uh wide body jets and uh, propeller based uh, fleet of uh, airborne early warning and control aircraft and c295 can serve as a platform so overall uh, if you see uh, c295 represents uh, you know a great addition to our uh, capability in the light transport fleet and uh, we can expect this aircraft to serve across multiple roles uh, within the three armed forces Thank you uh, if you like the content please do subscribe to the channel have a great day